I cannot believe I'm actually saying this, but we have the relaunch of the Ducati Hypermotard project. Hallelujah! It's been a year and a half, a year, about a year and two months since I did the last episode of this uh, series. Probably a year and a half since I stripped the bike down. Um, there's been massive delays with this project and basically I've had things together for the last sort of four months, but I thought I'd save this project now for as a winter project because during the summer months, the bike's just full of loan bikes, just haven't got room to work. And when you're assembling a whole bike from its raw pieces, you need room to get around the bike and everything. So, but never mind that, it is time for the Ducati Hakamotar to return to your screens. That can only mean one thing. Mavis, roll the intro. So where to start? Now, I thought about different ways of how we're gonna get going with this project, but I thought, first of all, because it's been a year and a half since the last video, it's probably a good idea to do a little bit of a recap before we start. So I've compiled some sort of the best of bits, if you like, from the Hypermotard restoration up until this point. I think we had 10 episodes of this build already. What this basically started out as, for those which are new to the channel and those in that last year and a half, is I bought a Hypermotard, I rode it twice. The engine was a little bit corroded, so I thought I'd do a very simple removal of the engine, rattle can job on the engine, put it back in again, give it a bit of a spruce up. Now, that's turned into a full nut, nut and bolt restoration, more or less, so ended up stripping the whole bike, going through everything. So I've made a little collage, compilation collage, of the best bits of the project so far, just to bring you up to speed in about a minute and a half. Put it on, Mavis. Being stuck indoors <laughs> is the perfect time to work on your motorcycle. It ain't gonna stop me working on a motorcycle. There's not really a great deal wrong with it. Ugh. Let's carry on and go deeper. Oh yeah, I'm, ah. Oh, oh dear. Then Nova. Broken. One of those. Really good fingering. Pull them off yourself. Come on, you're, you're impressed with this, aren't you? It only worked! And I should. Uh, no longer do I have a motorcycle. I just have a frame, an engine, and a box of bits. <laughs> Well, I've gone away, I've had a sleep, and I've decided this just ain't good enough. Ooh, some valves. That is it, finished. Well, finished. <laughs> Barely started. It's not quite to the end. So there we go, first pass. I've never seen such a smooth finish to powder coat before. Massive thanks to my mate Barry, quite amazing. Come on, baby. What a job that was. My comfort level's here, that was up here. Ducati performance camshaft at that. I can't wait for him to work his magic on those. Covid fatties. This is shit. Ah. So that is where we are at. Last video was the anodizing of the forks. I have since sent those forks off to Brooks Suspension. <laughs> Brooks Suspension. Um, they've rebuilt them. Let me show you the forks first of all because they look beautiful. So all of these Ducati bits, I'll show you all the bits I got in boxes at the moment. These have been hidden around my property, some in the shed, some up in the loft up here. I've got things hanging from left, right and centre. I've, I've had stuff stored in the back of the car. <laughs> so this has all now got to come together again. I've got to see where I am. But these are the completed, serviced and reassembled forks. So that is the fork, the lovely anodized tubes I had done, uh, all assembled, re-oiled, ready to go back onto the bike. So that's the first little update. The forks are done, the forks are back together, and don't they look 
pretty. So this is the rest of the Ducati bits all gathered together in one spot. I have the, the frame is still hanging from the ceiling where it was put a year and a half ago. And the subframe, the painted subframe, there it is. And the swinging arm is all hanging up there as well. But this is the rest of the bits. The engine is under the blue plastic there. And uh, that is it. Now, one of the delays, you know, was because we lost the heads in the post. So we've had to get some new heads. Um, I've had to then wait for Twan to work his magic and port all of the heads, which he has now done. So the fully ported heads are in this box. So I think, well, let's show you the heads before we get any further. We've got a head in a bag. No, this isn't seven. Oh, God! Oh, God! So what we have here is a fully ported um, and reassembled hypermotard head. I've, I've decided to go one step further with this bike now. So remember the rattle can paint job I had? I thought this project's been ongoing for so long, I've got to finish this bike properly. So when Twan had the heads, another reason for the slight delay is I asked to get them Cerakoted, so the heads are now also Cerakoted, and I'm going to do the same with the, the whole crankcase of the engine, but we'll come on to that in a minute. But these are the heads, as you can see, Twan has reassembled them all. I'll, I'll put them on the bench and do some close up shots because you've got to see the craftsmanship which has been put into these. All of the inlet tract has been opened up and polished, no, not polished, but ported. Polishing is a bit of a fallacy about polishing these surfaces, I think it actually slows down. The, uh, the, the flow of air. So these have been ported by Bigelow Performance, Twan at Bigelow Performance, and uh, he's assembled everything. I already had the Ducati race cams. If you remember, I had the Performance Ducati cam. So these has got the race cams back in. Um, and uh, yeah, basically all done, ready to go on the bike. Even the inlet tract has been ported to match the actual uh, head itself, so the air can go in. What Twan has said, is I'm basically looking at another 10% more power, really, throughout the entire rev range. So once this bike's all back together, we'll be going to CGS Racing for a full custom dyno map as well. So we will see exactly how much power this bike makes. I think they're about 95 horsepower from the factory. So maybe we'll be pushing just over about 100 at a back wheel. 100 at a back wheel would be amazing. But look at that. We will see how we get on. Beautiful. So massive, massive thanks to Twan for doing this. Um, I can't thank you enough, Twan. You know, it's been fantastic that you've done this. I know we've, we've taken a long time, but uh, it's well worth it. And I can't wait to see the difference this makes to the power of the bike. It's going to be a monster. Well, it's a hypermotor, not a monster, but you know what I mean. Really what I need to do is go through all of these boxes. <laughs> it goes back for a long, long way. See what I have here. I know I've pinched the caliper onto the supermoto. There's one of the calipers I nicked. So I definitely need a new front caliper. Um, but I think I've got everything else. I mean, I've even bought stuff like fancy oil cooler lines. Now, these, these are the lines which run to the oil cooler. You know, this cost about 120 quid for some fancy fittings and fancy lines. So I bought that. I've also bought this uh, rear suspension strut because I, I actually man I managed to cock up these these put these within here on my one I pressed it and it actually sort of caused some binding on these so I had to get another one I'm not 100% sure that is going to fit though so uh if that fits that'll be going on um there's a lot of stuff <laughs> I've got to try and remember how all that goes back together like I said it was a year and a half when I took it apart I've actually re-watched the whole Hypermotard series myself just to try and remind myself where things go and stuff but it's going to be a lot of, uh, maybe a lot of help from you guys. And talking of help, for the next episode, I've, because I want to go a bit further with the engine now, um, as I mentioned, as we know, it's a rattle can spray job on that engine, which, yeah, it's not really, in, the amount of money I've spent and the, de the attention to detail I'm trying to get here, it seems wrong just to go in with a rattle can spray job. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm doing a collaborative video with Desmo Works. Now, if you're not familiar with Nelly at Desmo Works, I'll put a link to his channel at the top there or over there. He runs a, a, a Ducati. Well, not just Ducati, all sorts of engines, but he does a lot of engine strip downs and builds. What he tries to do is sort of demystify 
these Ducati engines and show people that really these engines are relatively straightforward and easy to work on. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take my engine up to him, my bottom end, up to him. We're going to strip it. Um, I'm going to get the crank sent away for balancing. So I'm going to get all the crank balanced and then get the actual crankcases Seracoated by my mate Adam at A1 Powder Coating. So we're going to get the whole engine basically rebuilt, check all the tolerances inside, see how much wear is within the engine, and basically give some really, really good tips of how to strip and rebuild an engine, especially a Ducati engine. So I'm really, really excited about that. So go and check out Nelly's channel. He's a top bloke. He's got a Lotus Esprit as well, which he does some content on. Um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a top fella. He's a top fella, Nelly. So the next episode of the Hypermotide Restoration will be at Nelly's place stripping the engine down and getting seriously mucky. <laughs> so I'm really, really excited about this project now. I've just been waiting for this all to come together, the stars to align. I was going to attempt to strip the engine down myself, but not the first time. If you see someone else doing it to show you how it's done, it's much easier than trying to just attempt it myself. And I didn't want to turn up with someone with a load of bits in bags and say, here's my engine, can you put it back together? So it's better to strip it have the same person strip it and rebuild it. So uh, really rather excited. This bike is going to be a little bit special, I think. I'm even thinking of get, getting it repainted as well. I'm thinking is going, you know, the Audi sort of primer colour, that sort of primer grey, getting all the bodywork painted in that primer grey, obviously leaving the red frame and then maybe go for some sort of more vintage Ducati logos in black on the tank. I know it's been done before, but I just think that will make the bike look a little bit different and very, very nice actually. Bring it up to date, but still with those, well, I guess you could call it retro looks now. It is a 2009 motorcycle. So there we are, that is it for episode one. So this is really just to recap and remind you that I do still have the Hypermotard. There is still a Hypermotard project and we're now starting it up again. So thanks for watching. I hope you're now up to speed. If you haven't seen the other episodes in this series, I'll link them at the top again there. Have a watch through. Like I say, some of them are a year and a half old, so some of the early ones, the production quality looks a bit pants now. <laughs> I like to think I've stepped it up a little bit, but stick with it, gets into its flow a little bit, and uh, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good series, so something to watch on a wet Sunday. But thanks for watching, guys, as always, and then next time I catch you, I'll be at Nelly's place getting my hands mucky, <laughs> or he will be. I may be just making the tea. <laughs> Cheers, guys. See you later.